oops in case you missed it i did a test of the new firmware's autofocus and i might have made panasonic look bad i had people tell me the test was no good because i was wearing the wrong clothes i was using the wrong lens because apparently one of the most expensive micro four thirds lens wasn't a good choice so i'm making this video to hopefully try and clear this up and do a full retest of the lot I think some people thought I was trying to poop on the GH5, but actually I wasn't because it is my weapon of choice. I just don't trust the autofocus at all. I do concede that using a 42.5mm at f2 was a bit of a stress test. So I did switch up the lens to make it a bit fairer on the GH5. And in this video, I've gone for the 25mm f1.7. But that's the only concession I'm making. The clothes are still my usual bad taste. So the video you're about to see is taken from my course on how to shoot with the GH5. That's a full five hour thing that shows you the ins and outs of the camera and how best to use it. And you can use the app to download the lectures for offline viewing. And if you're not happy, you can get a refund in 30 days. In the course, obviously, I'm going to go into more detail about how to operate the autofocus. But for the sake of this video on YouTube to keep things short, I'm going to go straight to the tests and come to the conclusions. So now you've seen how to operate the camera's autofocus, let's switch over to some tests now and look at the best modes and settings that you should be using. That's if you should be using it at all, and spoiler alert, it's not perfect. I designed my testing around two scenarios where I see autofocus as being really beneficial. First of all, when the camera's distance to the subject is continually changing, that might be because either the camera's on a gimbal and you're moving with the gimbal, or the subject could be moving and the camera could be still. That was tested with my patented catwalk test. Like an idiot, I walked up and down all day testing all the different modes out and a variety of different sensitivity and speed settings. And the second scenario I wanted to test was a talking head situation just like this. So I would sit still and see if the camera would just pulse randomly. And then I would lean forward out of the focus plane. I'm testing to see whether it keeps me in focus the whole time and also how bad the pulsing gets. So it's rarely a smooth transition to acquire focus. And sometimes even when it's got focus, it will just pulsate randomly. You'll be able to see that on this test by the lights in the background going in and out of focus. And also the lens I'm using, the Lumix 25mm f1.7, has a lot of focus breathing. So when the focus changes, it looks like it's zooming in and out slightly. So that makes it really pronounced when it's actually racking focus. It's when it does that pulsing that for me it looks a bit amateur and it's why I don't use autofocus in a commercial setting. But I do try and explore the settings to minimize that and we'll look at a few tips towards the end about how best to control it. I am testing on the 25mm as mentioned. The tests are going to be done at f2.8 so it's not a super shallow depth of field. It is still a bit of a challenge for the GH5 but at the same time you could reasonably expect decent performance at f2.8 especially. Before we go into the tests themselves, let's set some groundwork with some general findings. Firstly, although it's not something I did as a test in this video, you might see some people do autofocus tests just by pointing the camera at different objects to see if it adjusts. And I think those people are going to be generally happier with the autofocus than I am. Those shots don't tend to linger on the subject for very long, so the pulsing doesn't really come into play. And also because the subject isn't moving or the camera isn't moving too much, the camera's not having to track a moving subject and that helps it out a lot. In my limited testing, I found the one area mode better for that type of shooting. And that was when the square was central in the frame and the subject was completely engulfing that square. Secondly, I'm going to make the fairly safe assumption and say that it's not really usable with adapted lenses. For example, the Sigma 1835 via a speed booster. It hunts even worse and it struggles to acquire focus. I tested that more thoroughly on an old firmware, but I have no reason to believe that that's been improved. And I think that's just got to be accepted as a fact of life. If you want to use adapted glass, then autofocus is not going to work well at all. In my testing, I looked at whether different color profiles had an effect and also compared 4K and Full HD recording. And 4K may have been marginally better at keeping focus, although that would need more testing to confirm and I'd not pick my resolution based on autofocus anyway. As for the new near and far shift options, I'm not finding much use for them for video. You can see that with a big focus square covering both foreground and background, it does prefer the background when you press the back button or autofocus. The problem is when you've got any kind of movement in the frame, it seems to forget that you pressed near or far focus. In my test, 
of near focus after moving off my nearby subject it focused on the background just as fast as it did in regular mode and even had trouble focusing on the foreground again just the same as it did in regular mode. Now that might work out for you if you've got no moving objects in the frame but in that case you could have just used manual focus. Of course you can go back to the back button focus and retrain it to look at the near or far objects as a priority but you're not going to do that mid recording because you'll get a focus hunt and it wouldn't look very good. Lastly I just add the caveat to my testing and say that the autofocus performs inconsistently. So I did multiple tests for each mode to try and average that out, but it's a fact of life that it doesn't do the same thing every time. Okay, on to the results of the tracking catwalk tests. My winner for performance was the one area mode with a small square. It kept me in focus the most, but it pulsed a lot even when I wasn't leaving the focus plane. Now using one area mode with a big square was not as good at keeping me in focus than small square, but pulsing was massively reduced, so it did feel a bit more organic to me. So I'd choose between one of those most of the time personally, depending on my priority between pulsing and focus accuracy. Face Detect was a very close second for focus retention. It kept me in focus more than the one area big square mode. Pulsing was about equal to one area small square as well. So which of these best modes would I go for in this scenario? So the question is whether you prioritize focus or pulsing. If it's focus, one area small square was the best, but then your subject has to be in that square at all times for it to work. If you can't guarantee that they will be, Face Detect will work better as long as they are facing roughly towards the camera. If pulsing is your enemy, then one area big square might serve you better. I think your choice of lens and f-stop will be really important in the focus pulsing equation. If you've got a wider lens that doesn't exhibit the focus breathing that this lens does, and it's also stopped down a bit in terms of your f-stop, then focus accuracy might be more important to you than the pulsing, which might not be as evident. As far as the other focus modes go, 225 was the worst at keeping me in focus I found and it still pulsed about as badly as the ones that did keep me in better focus. Tracking mode worked similarly to face detect, although once I turned my back it lost me fairly easily and would not reacquire my face like face detect would. I also don't have much confidence about how it detects objects. Face detect knows what a face is, even if it doesn't focus very well, you get a yellow square around your face. But when you're tapping the screen to try and train the tracking mode to identify the object that you want, it doesn't really inspire much confidence. It doesn't throw a good shape around it. You just normally get a square around a corner of that object, which makes me think if that object moves, it's going to fairly easily lose tracking. When it comes to the speed and sensitivity settings in this test, the bad news is there probably isn't one setting that you can set and forget for the best results. It just will depend on how fast your subject is moving. Sensitivity at minus three almost does mean locked on. Sensitivity and speed at zero gave me most pleasing mix of focus and hunting for the catwalk test. Focus accuracy wasn't the best in this case, but the hunting was reduced somewhat. So again, it depends on which you prioritize. Cranking everything up on sensitivity and speed gave me the most in focus, but also the most pulsing. So if you haven't figured it out by now, it seems to me there's a general trade-off between focus pulsing and actually having your subject in focus. The results where I had more time in focus during tracking, for example, also came with more pronounced pulsing. Let's take a look at the interview tests. Now you'd think this would be the bread and butter of face detect and it did get decent focus but again I got bad pulsing at every combination of speed and sensitivity except when all were at minimum where it didn't even try to refocus on me when I leant forward out of the focus plane. Strangely it even pulsed while I was static some of the time. Turning my head sideways made it panic pulse a little bit as well and that is a reasonable movement to expect in an interview setting. So my winner again is the one area mode this time with a large focus area. Now again this wasn't the absolute best focus accuracy when I moved out of the focus plane but when I wasn't moving the focus was solid and there was less pulsing. So I'm prioritizing pulsing a little bit in this test given the ugly focus rack of this lens and also the lights behind me giving away the pulsing. So this mode wins on a sensitivity and speed of 0, zero. Now I was a bit surprised by that finding so I did a follow-up stress test with a smaller depth of field and still the one area mode with a bigger square pulsed a lot less than the alternatives and actually did as well at keeping me in focus as face detect did. One area with a small square did about as well as face detect but obviously it comes with the disadvantage of having to have your subjects in the same specific area and the other modes either failed to keep me in focus as long or pulsed even worse. So after all that testing obviously in an ideal world I'd have been able to tell you there is one mode that wins with one specific setting 
but that's just not possible. So instead, here are my tips when it comes to using autofocus on this camera. Now, I'd only consider using autofocus if you can shoot way more than you need and you can live with some of the ruined shots or missed focus or ugly hunting that you're gonna get. If it's a wedding and you've only got one chance at getting the shot, I just wouldn't trust it. Shooting on a wider lens and closing down that lens to a bigger f-stop number will get you a deeper depth of field and it will probably make life easier on the autofocus. Of course, in that scenario with a deeper depth of field, it's also easier to pull focus on manual focus. So I realized that might defeat the purpose. For the two scenarios that I tested extensively, when your subject is changing distance to the camera, like in my catwalk test, small square gave the best balance of pulsing and focus. And if the subject isn't definitely going to stay within the square, then I'd go with face detection assuming the subject is looking in the direction of the camera. The speed and sensitivity settings in this case should depend on how much the subject is moving. Higher speed and sensitivity will increase the chance of being in focus and also increase the pulsing. In a talking head situation, I prefer one area with a large square with speed and sensitivity at zero. Next question to ask yourself is, do you or your audience care about the pulsing? Because if you don't, that does change the findings somewhat where the small square one area mode or face detect works the best. The pulsing isn't as visible if you're just looking at the subject and there aren't light sources or focus breathing issues giving it away. And that might be acceptable to you if you aren't aiming for really high production value. So I advise trying out your own lenses and see how they perform for you. I spent a lot of time testing in all sorts of different modes in the hope that you wouldn't have to, but the fact remains it's inconsistent and I think that's proven by all of the mixed messaging out there on the best settings to use. And if this has completely put you off using autofocus, then I apologize for breaking your dreams, but also it's worth getting comfortable with manual focus. Get used to using that focus peaking, punch in function and the EVF to better judge your focus. Don't forget the GH5 has a brilliant focus pulling mode that works really well with native lenses. So there's a video later on in the course to show you how to use that. And if you are using manual lenses, we talk about how to do better focus pulls with those as well. Oh, and don't forget, we've been looking at continuous autofocus. The actual acquisition of focus can still be done using the back button. And while that's not foolproof, that can be really handy, even on a Sigma lens. Okay, that's all of my tests and recommendations. If I missed anything or you want to share something or you just want to shout at me again, put it in the description below and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.